With me, as always, to share her insights and wisdom is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Hey, Jules. I'm good. I'm, no, I'm useless. <laughs> You're <laughs> I'm useless. I, I'm useless. I, I actually went on TikTok today and made a video that said, you know, take a minute, close your eyes, check in with yourself. See if you have the energy to work today. Because I just did that and the answer was fuck no. And so, <laughs> and so That's I'm the benefits doing, of working for yourself. Oh God, yes. Well, I'm you know, I'm showing up for my appointments, obviously we're doing the podcast. Yeah. But um, I'm showing up for my appointments, but I'm doing fuck all else. You know, I just, I don't have the energy. I'm, I was supposed to finish writing some stuff. I, I was supposed to finish writing the sales page for the Ascend program for, you know, helping spiritual practitioners, energy healers, you know, psychics, mediums, channels, whatever, um, to build their own business. Right. And, um, I was supposed to get that sales page done today and that is not happening. <laughs> It's not happening. I just don't have the energy for it. I sat down this morning. I actually, I had somebody cancel an appointment and I was like, oh, thank God. I've got an hour and a half. I can work on this. This will be great. I sat down and my brain went, <laughs> it was just like, oh my no. gosh. And I was like, okay, maybe I need a cup of coffee. And because, you know, I've been waking up in the middle of the night and, and, uh, and so I got a cup of coffee and that did not help. And I said, okay, maybe I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> And that also did not help. And I was like, okay. And so I went outside and I sat in the sun and I, I took my shoes and socks off. I put my feet on the ground and did some earthing and, you know, did some chill and cool time, you know, without my phone, without my computer, no screens, just me and the sunlight in the, in the yard. And it was lovely until I started to get a little burned. And I was like, okay, because, you know, I'm on the equator. It does not take that long to get burned here. So... True that. Um, you know, I think I made it maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 before my, my skin is like, ow, ow, ow. It's like, oh, you know, man. On, ow. And I'm like, okay. So, but yeah. Well, I've, again, and I I've just, been up. I wave the white flag of surrender for the day. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I, I have been waking up every, like from one to four in the morning. Yep. It's like every hour on the hour. And of course, I'm thinking it's like, you know, my hot flashes, but I'm like, gum, I'm taking all my herbs and stuff. And they had calmed down, but I'm like, all of a sudden there, I thought they were ramping up, but I'm, I'm here. Maybe the eclipse that we just had has something to do with this. What, what is it? Cause like I roll over and all of a sudden I'm like, ting, I'm awake. Yeah. I'm, I'm rolling over. I'm perfectly comfortable when I'm on one side and then I roll over and I wake up and I go into a full body sweat. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, Whoa. me too. It's like, my yes, body just like starts to run energy all at once, and I just go whoosh. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, I'm I'm waking up dehydrated every morning because of it. Um, I'm literally I'm I'm sleeping with an, a water bottle next to my bed because I just it's it's that bad. Same. So, yep. Same. Yeah. And, and that's. <laughs> That's the eclipse energy. That's the there. There is massive transformation happening right now. Um, we are having so much. Uh, you know, there's so much shift happening in the world, and then you add the eclipse energy and the full moon energy into that. And um, I mean, we're recording this on the 26th of October, so you can can check the astrology based on that when when this comes out. But the. <clears throat> There's so much going on right now with this that we are just, uh, if you're if you're at all um, aware and sensitive, that's what I was looking for. Thank you, sensitive. <laughs> if you're mm -hmm. at all sensitive, you are having a response to this, and that's why I was like, I'm exhausted. First, so f for two weeks, I was like, yep. Wee, I've got so much energy. Here I go. Watch me go. Right, and then. Crash and burn today. Crash and burn. Yeah. And I yep. I saw somebody else on, on I don't remember if it was Facebook or, or LinkedIn, or somebody else was saying, you know, they crashed and burned today too. And I'm like, yeah, there's something going on astrologically about this that, that's causing that response. And I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a lot of posts about burnout right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to just debunk a myth because I'm seeing this myth propagated across all these different platforms and it's complete fucking bullshit. 
And that is, what is you that? can't burn out if you love what you do. That's such utter crap. <laughs> I, have done I hadn't heard that one now. <laughs> I've done what I've loved for the last 30 years. I have burned out many times. <laughs> It's burnout is not a function of whether or not you love what you're doing. Burnout is a function of whether you exceed your body's ability to cope by mm -hmm. putting your shoulds in front of your body's needs. That is the definition of burnout. So if you're overly excited about what you're doing, you can easily do that. You'll be like, ooh, I got to do this and I got to do that. Da, 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 this da, 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 and this da, da. and this. And your body's going, please, can we just sleep? Please, can we just do something else? Please, can we just take a break? My butt hurts. I'm locked. My butt is locked up from sitting for too long. Please, can we go for a walk? And you're going, I'm so excited. I'm going to do this. And if you're ADHD and you're just like hyper-focused, you're totally hosed, right? And, and it's just like, mm, no, you can absolutely burn out doing what you love and it's not hard. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this is a reminder to, you know, take care of you. Don't, don't, when you think about doing something and you go, oh, and your head goes, oh, but I should, that's when you need to stop because that's when things are going to go sideways for you. That's where burnout starts right there. But I should, but I should. When you start shooting on yourself, that is when burnout starts to go, starts to get ugly. Uh, and then you have the eclipse on top of that going, really, seriously, don't do that. Yeah. And then this is the time of year that, uh, we, you know, the darkness is coming. So more inward work and and all that so does does that the veil is getting really thin in fact it was funny because i was like y'all some more downloads and more yeah knocks in the middle of the night going hey 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 and you're like fuck you i'm sleeping yes yeah that's what i've been doing i've been fussing i'm like y'all i have my wards up for a reason Did, I, out <laughs> but in it is and and so I was fussing at them, thinking it was them that was waking me up. Because I'm like, okay, I know the veil is thin, but come on. And then it turns out to be the eclipse. I'm like, whoops, sorry. <laughs> you know. Little details. But, yeah, no. You know. Well, and seeing as how that's been my reality, da-da-da, segue. Da, da, da. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Yes. Yes. Uh that's it. We're, we are going to be talking about what actually is reality. Um, but be before we get to that, we actually had a um, really cool thing that happened with one of our listeners. Yes. You want to uh, tell everybody what happened? Uh, I'll, I'll read. I'll, I'll do the details, but you want to can I tell them what happened? Sure. Uh, we, so I got an email from a listener who uh, had some really lovely things to say about how her listening to the podcast had, had impacted her life. And so we wanted to share that with you. Absolutely. So, um, and we did get permission from, um, lady's name is uh, Christine, and we did get her permission to read her letter. So here it goes. It says, hello, Kelly. You and your podcast family have saved my life. I was in a terrible place when I found your podcast. I know I was meant to find you when I did. It has taken several years and a lot of money I did not have to undo the mess of a life I was living. Every week I listened and every week, which is how I lived, I took one step closer to the courage I needed to look at myself, my circumstances, and situations. Eventually the courage to face my darkness and pull myself out back into the light came. I'm not really sure I knew what living in the light was, but I am here now, and it is wonderful. I have a sister who is a spiritual worker. She started me on this path before I knew I even belonged on it. She knew and was very patient with me. I have performed some exercises with her, journeyed into my Akashic Records. We took a look at my aura and evaluated some of my issues with past lives. I pay her when she isn't looking. The internet is awesome for that. <laughs> Yet, which which I love that. I do love Yet that. with her yeah, with her guidance, I am drawn to you. I can't explain it. Courage is one of my major issues. I am afraid. 
One day I will have the courage to make that discovery call and look deeper into my mess with you. I am obtaining my real estate license, a step into a new beginning, and was just studying. I had had enough of contracts, my brain hurt, and thought, I need to listen to Kelly's last broadcast. As I was logging out to go find you on Pandora, this email popped up. Not sure why I didn't see it on Friday. Anyway, I know that there's a reason for it. For now, I am sending love. You have no idea what an impact you have made on my life. Christine. Well, that's that lovely. was awesome. It gave right. me chills. Yeah. So, and the email she was referencing is I had sent out an email saying, hey, you've been on my list for a while. Could you ask me, could you tell me why it is that you haven't signed up for a discovery call yet? And what's really interesting is that when people write to me, uh, when the, well, the people who did write to me back from that, uh, a lot of them said, I'm afraid. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm like, no, okay, but so I just, I want to address that for a minute because, you know, I understand that there's fear there, right? I understand that, that you feel like you can't hold more than you already have and that looking at your stuff will be, will push you over the edge, right? That's, that's where that fear comes from is this, I can't hold more than I already have. And I've got news for you. You already have held more than you already have now because you've been listening to the podcast. So you've been working on stuff without even really knowing. And you carried a lot more stuff before you started this podcast than you do now. So you have plenty of bandwidth. It, the, the fear is now a resistance to the change. And that is what's holding you in place. And that's actually one of the first things we teach people in the Welcome to the Woo program is about their resistances because that's what gets in the way. It's so easy to convince yourself, oh, maybe next year. Oh, maybe this. Oh, maybe that. Oh, when I have X, Y, or Z in place, then I will be mm -hmm. there. And it isn't anything other than a delay tactic. That's all it is. And the reason that you want to delay is because on some level, now remember, we're, and this, we're, this is going to get into the reality conversation, right? We are living in the eternal moment of now, which means that despite the fact that our consciousness has bought into the idea of time, time doesn't actually exist. And so on some level, if you're afraid to have a discovery call, it's because on some level, you know, it's going to work. And your ego now is going, I don't want to die because when we step into a new version of ourselves, the old version of ourselves dies, right? And so your ego is going, no, 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 let's just delay. Let's delay. Push it off, push it off, push it off, you know, and, and that's what happens. And so you get into this delay mode, but the more intensely you feel it, the more likely it is that this is actually going to work for you. So I, I'm just going to say, if you're feeling fear, make the call because that is the indicator that it's going to work, right? So let's, let's get into the discussion about reality because reality is, you know, we think we know what it is, right? So give me what you would say the, the standard definition of reality for the mundane world is. Okay, so what I experience in a day what I see smell using all of my senses that is my reality so, so see smell taste um, my experiences if you know I, my reality is I drove to work today I didn't fly in you know on my dragon which would be awesome but <laughs> <laughs> you know just saying you know so that to me that would be a, my reality yeah my so human experience I think here. It's very interesting that even in this, the even when I said, you know, the the standard mundane Muggle version of reality, you went for reality as defined by my perception, which is actually a step ahead of Muggle-related reality. Muggle-related reality. Is, oh, I didn't know that. Is objective <laughs> reality that exists. Whether we like it or not, whether we engage with it or not, it exists. And that, 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 you know, the table is real, 
the thing on the wall behind me is real. You know, the, the shirt I'm wearing okay. is real. My body is real. You know, there's, there's this, we're real, right? This, this is real. Now, what's interesting is that right now there's, there's a lot of um, discussion in mainstream media about whether or not we're living in the matrix. And, yeah. you know, that is actually, we are living in the matrix. Okay, let's just start with that. It, it isn't, you know, designed by a, a, you know, a computer that is running our lives. That we know of. That we know, well, no, that we know sure. of. No, I'm not pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. That's I've, good. I've been outside of the matrix, and so you know, I can I can look back in, and not so much. So, but good. The the matrix is actually a collective reality. So it is, it is a quote unquote reality, which of course is an illusion unto itself, right? It's, it's like you're in, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember Second Life, but like the metaverse, right? Second Life or the metaverse where, where you're, you have an avatar and you're in this space and you're, uh, you're moving around and other people are in the space and people are creating the, the, their little islands and they're building things on them and they're doing things, right? You know, and it is a microcosm of the macrocosm right? Which is we're, we're coming together and we're playing different roles and we're, we're doing different things. And collectively we create the reality that is this virtual reality, right? Well, we're also living in the same co-created virtual reality where our collective intentions, our collective beliefs about what, what is true, who we are, what the world looks like, right? All of these things are shifting and, you know, all of these things are formulated by the intersection of our collective belief structures, which is why the world is constantly in change because it changes as fast as people can change their minds. Okay. And so, okay. Okay. Why we also have multiple dimensions because every time someone ch makes a choice, every choice that could have been made creates another dimension because all choices happen simultaneously. So does that break your brain yet? Wait, we, yeah, that one broke my brain. Yeah. I saw the look on your face. So yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like <"R> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <"R> <laughs> Okay. So, a little Scooby Doo reference there. Yeah. So if if we if we know that the eternal moment of now is everything that ever has, ever could, or or ever will happen, happening all at once, right? Okay. Okay. So that's the definition of the eternal moment of now, and it's it's there's no time, so everything is happening all at once, but. It can't hit other things, so there are multiple dimensions to it, right? And so, okay, turn, okay, you make a choice. So, if you turn right or turn left at the end of your street, or okay. you straight, assuming there's a straight, even if there isn't a straight, maybe there's the option to drive across and into your neighbor's yard, right? Hey, um, right? <laughs> yeah, every choice you could possibly make becomes another dimensional reality. And it intersects with everybody else's other dimensional realities. And so a new world is created every time everyone makes choices. So think. Okay. Doctor Strange in the multiverse. Okay. 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 All right. So let's say you right. turn right in this reality. Mm-hmm. But you turn okay. left in another reality. In this reality, you, okay. to work, you got there on time. Everything went the way it's gone every other day. In the other reality, you went to through an intersection where somebody ran a stop sign, T-boned your car, and you ended up a paraplegic. Okay. Oh. Different realities. That are all existing at the same time. All existing at the same time. That has nothing to do with past lives. 
nothing to, well so past lives are existing at the same time now too so you know that that makes it another layer of complication right i didn't say this would be a simple concept to understand i just said so okay <laughs> so, you know, the so, onions going 3d <laughs> and, yeah, yeah lots of d right lots of d, so, lots, of d. lots of d yeah the, the so past lives are also happening at the same time right so you are existing in this life as well as in every other life that you ever have or ever will have at the same time. And this is why okay. past life trauma can be so impactful. And we don't talk about this much, but future life trauma can also be impactful. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes, that, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 So when we are stepping into this reality, what we have to acknowledge is that that it's just a suggestion okay one of the things you know if you've seen the stuff around the um, mandela effect right the mandela effect is where people remember things being different than what they were and specifically named for nelson mandela because a lot of people remember him dying in prison in 1994 but he didn't in this reality and so there have been slipstreams, and there's a lot of examples of this. Like, if you ask me where the kidneys are supposed to be, I'm going to say on your back, because that's where the kidney punch was mm -hmm. always done, right? They're not there. They're in the front. If you ask me where the heart is in the, in the chest, it's off to the left. That's not what's true in this reality. The heart is in the center. If you ask me where New Zealand is, I'm going to tell you that it's up on top of Australia. That's not where it is in this reality. It is to the southeast of Australia. It's really close to the South Pole. I'm like, WTF, man, right? And then there's all kinds of other things, but these are the things that are like, you know, I mean, I think, oh, well, you know, some things are perspective, you know? It's like GIF versus right. GIF peanut butter. That's another thing that, that people love to talk about, whether or not there was a cornucopia, in fritled loom, things like that. But those logo things, I'm like, eh, you know, maybe there was a version somewhere along the way, or maybe I just made it up in the collective consciousness. I'm like, that I don't. But these other things, I'm like, freaking A, I know where these were, right? And when I was 16, I had friends who lived in New Zealand, and I knew where New Zealand was, okay? So, you know, these are the types of things that I'm like, no, I freaking know that that's what was true, right? <clears throat> So, but this is what's happening is that there's, there's a theory that every time they turn on the super collider at CERN, that the, the timeline or the, that, that we slip into time, a different time, that some people are saying we actually destroy the reality that we're living in every time it gets turned on and we get flipped to another dimension where things are just slightly different, right? Okay, now, wait, what is this thing that's turning? I'm sorry, I don't know what, what you're talking about. What is this thing? It's a Large They, Hadron they turn on Super where? Collider. Large Hadron Super Collider in CERN in France, I think. I think it might be, might be Switzerland. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But CERN. It's okay. Um, it's large, large Hadron Super Collider. It is a scientific experiment where they're trying to go below atom level and find... I think they're trying to seek out the big, the the boson Higgs, um, Higgs boson uh, particle. I don't know. I'm I'm not, I I haven't looked deeply into it. It's science stuff. Okay. It's, it's, okay. It's physics, right? It's physics. Physicists are fighting yeah. with the world, right? And, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> there, there's a theory on this. You know, do I ascribe to it? I don't know, but I will tell you that we are switching realities. I can tell when we switch realities, people are slightly different. And like my, my massage therapist that I got when I first got here, one day she spoke perfect English and we had easy conversations. And the next day I came, she spoke much more broken English and it was much harder to communicate with her. 
okay, that's weird. Well, we've known each other for months at this point. So this was not a one-time experience. For months, she spoke perfect English. And then... Okay. So she didn't. Did okay. she know she didn't? No. She didn't know... Okay. Okay, 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 okay. See, here, here's, where, here's where my little nerd brain kicks in. So, question would be, did her reality change? A. B. Did your reality change? Or C. Did the whole thing reality change, but you're the one that noticed it? Right. And the answer is, do we know? I'm not sure we know. Do we know? I mean, Do we I know? definitely <laughs> noticed it because it was different for me. So, you know, there is a theory that if you change the timeline, that the people within the timeline will not notice, right? Because you change the past, and the past is creates who they are in the moment. And so if you're changing the past, the people within that past will not see a difference. But if you are outside of the timeline, when the timeline changes, then you will notice mm -hmm. the difference, right? Next. Well, yeah, you may cease to exist. Well, you could cease to exist, absolutely. There could be a whole host of things that could be, you know, it's the whole butterfly effect. Of, you know, one small yeah. thing happens here and, you know, the whole thing goes to hell in a handbasket over there, right? Yeah. Um, or gets better. I mean, you can't produce, predict, right? Um but the point being that the and, and we can go down a really long rabbit hole on this and I I'm not my goal is not to go down a freaking long rabbit hole. But oh my, come on, back to the future six. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, mean, I am aware of things on a broader scope than just this physical reality. And so mm -hmm. I think that for that reason I pick up on the differences. And that I'm not as subject to the, you know, hey, it's it's always been this way sort of dynamic, right? Um, okay. I think that there are some of us that are just shifting more than others. I think that there are some of us that are moving into different timelines while other people are staying st stagnant in theirs. They're staying in stasis, right? Do you think um, that's, that's a, a relation to their sensitivity or non-sensitivity or if they've awoken yet, like spiritually I think awoken, it's that thing. Related. related. Yeah. I think okay. It's related. Uh, so, but you know, I mean, this, these are all theories, right? I haven't spent a lot of time talking to my guides about this, but you know, I'm, I know what's true, which is reality is shifting on a regular basis, right? Mm -hmm. I'm very tapped into reality and what I'm tapped into from one day to the next is often very different and so that's significant and second is you have to acknowledge that reality isn't real okay that's the part that i really want to get to here okay reality isn't real <clears throat> it is a collective agreement to believe in what we're calling collective reality and you can opt out okay. of the agreement anytime you choose. So do people yeah. do that? Like, is is that a thing? I, yeah, I do it all the time. So you know, okay, I do it all the time for you know, like I'll do healing work, right? And if mm -hmm. I have something that's too far along because it's it's gotten too far, like a cancer or you know, some infection or something where it's too far along to do a straight healing on it, I'll literally just turn back time and go back to the time when it wasn't too far along and fix it from there. Okay? That's opting out of this reality. It's doing I'm sorry, I'm processing. I'm 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 I'm, I'm processing. Because of we've, I've also in class been doing the work on, you know, talking to my future self, talking to my past self. Yep. So it, is that different than going into the past and like, I'll say past life, that's only my vocabulary, um, and fixing that trauma or fixing the thing and coming forward? Or is this different that you're talking about? 
It's the same concept. Okay, same concept. Okay. But it's a different thing. It, well, I mean, trauma versus physical reality issues. Yeah, they're different, but same idea. Yeah. Okay. That is really interesting. Now, do other dimensions have this same type of multidimensional time thing going on that we we do we do because time doesn't exist but in all dimensions so um as as doctor who is is fond of saying time is wibbly wobbly um and and it is uh so time doesn't exist in all dimensions but and and our reality you know, is just one of many different realities. I mean, there's multiple planets with, with life on them and, you know, all of them have their own reality scenarios and things like that. But there's, this is super useful. So like, you know, Kathy talks about a guy, I think it was Kathy, some, some might've been a different friend of mine. Um, somebody I know was went to an event where the guy who was talking about being able to um you know shift into other realities in order to create different experiences right and he was talking and he fell off the stage and he broke his leg like the bone went through Oops. the the skin like compound fracture right oh as he was sitting there you know he had he, he you know they they came up and somebody got his leg back, you know, his bone back in, because you have to set a, a compound fracture like that. And they, they got that done. And then he refused to go to the hospital. He was like, no, 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 I'll just change my reality. It'll be fine. And by the end of his presentation, where he was, he, he just perched on a stool for the, for the remainder of his presentation. By the end of his presentation, his bone was no longer broken. His skin was no longer broken. His leg was perfect. And he lifted up his his pant leg to show everybody the, the even the pant had, the pants had stopped being bloody and they had stopped being torn and the whole thing because he just shifted his body from another reality into this reality. Holy cow! <laughs> okay, that's that that that's pretty badass. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I have done this when I have been in pain or sick or whatever. I have done that. I've called a well version of myself in from another reality to help heal faster. Now, I'm not as adept at it as he is because I haven't spent a lot of time practicing it. But, you know, my husband and I just just had the, the flu that was going around here in Boquete and it was a mm -hmm. flu for everybody and we only had it for two. Because I was like, nope, we're going to pull that up. We're going to pull out of this. We're going to pull out of this. And of course, yeah. I did until I was already exhausted before I started doing this, which was not the right choice because I didn't have the energy to do the, the thing. But which is yeah. so long, right? Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I did. I did that. Um, and, you know, these, these are the types of things that, that you can manage when you're doing stuff like that but you have to uninvest from reality being real and manifestation works the same way right if you believe that that reality is quote unquote real then you're going to have a hard time believing how anything could manifest because in your mm -hmm. reality you have not seen it happen and this is the whole wayne dyer of you've got to believe it to see it right instead of see it to believe mm -hmm. um but when you uninvest in reality being limited and you just treat the world as a playground and you know it's it's a creative you know it's like a finger paint project right and you, <laughs> like i'm going to finger paint, paint this reality right and you infuse it with the joy and the happiness and the excitement then you amplify the manifestation in that way right but you also have to uninvest in reality being real because you're trying to create something out of nothing and there you go okay that is not possible 
by the laws of physics. And, you know, you come back to the conversation I had with my soon-to-be ex-husband 25 years ago where he, I said, you know, he, he was saying, well, I can support you in, in what you're going to be doing. I was telling him I was going to step into this path, and he was an atheist and did not believe in this stuff. And, and he said, I can support you. I said, honey, that would be like me looking at you as a physicist and saying, I think physics is total crap, which I do, by the way. And, but I can support you being the best physicist possible, right? And, and he's like, oh. And I'm like, yeah, physics isn't real. <laughs> and he's just like, uh. Like, physics is the collective rules by which we have agreed that this reality operates. It is, yet again, another collective belief structure. And so, you know, this is, this is the thing, right? All of these pieces and parts, right? So when we assume that reality is a collective belief structure and that we opt into it, I mean, if you don't think you've opted into reality, I want you to take a look at a child of like two to five years old and tell me that they don't live in a different reality than we do. Oh, completely. Right? That's because they haven't yet opted into this reality. They are still playing with the finger paints and creating the They're world. still talking to grandma that's been dead 10 years. Yes. They are still and seeing dragons and unicorns. Yes. So this is what I'm saying is that we opted in. Our parents programmed us to opt into this reality, just like their parents programmed mm -hmm. them. Right? But we can opt out. And when you opt out, then your magic becomes much stronger. Because now, it's, it's interesting. In the, in the physics, right? <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute a cough. But um, so what was interesting when you were saying that was, and I might be going off on a tangent, but I think it's the same thing as, as you're saying you, – your reality is not boxed in, right? But I'm thinking more of a personal level, meaning if I've always experienced, I'm going to completely make this up because sure. um, we create our own realities, right? That, that's, that's, you know, part of like the, uh, the, when you make this up, you're going to be borrowing somebody who's listening story. So I just want them to know that you are actually borrowing their story. So when they hear you tell their story, they don't, don't go, Oh, that's weird. No, she's actually just going to be borrowing your story. She doesn't know that that's what she's going to do, but I'm about, I'm watching her about to do it. So I just want to say that. So go ahead, go ahead, make it up. I love it. I'm completely making this up. Mm -hmm. So if my reality is I've always been told you're not good enough, you can't do this. I'm stuck in this marriage for whatever reason, abusive, just bad, just toxic, whatever. Um, I'm stuck in the wrong, I'll, I'll never get a promotion. I'll never get that, this job. I will never be able to go to college. I will always be broke. I will always be somebody's, insert name here, doormat. That's the kind of things I'm, I'm, that's kind of going through my head. And if, based on what you're talking, if I believe that is my reality and there's no room for anything else, then that is. Yeah. So if we take it on a personal level, it's like, Bitches, we're going to break out this box. So that same kind of concept, we can make that reality because if I change my mindset, my perspective, and I change things, that will change that reality on, a, on a, my own being. D so does that kind of make sense or is it a little different? There's a microcosm and a macrocosm, right? So in the microcosm okay. of your personal reality, what you're saying is absolutely true. And, and the yes. identity in which we invest, the identity that we hold as being this is who I am, that we invest in, is what creates our reality for our personal reality. Pers my personal one, yes. And then on the macrocosm of the collective consciousness, the collective, the outside world, right? Then mm -hmm. the, the same thing is true. It's just how that identity and belief structure and assumptions 
play into relationship with other people's beliefs, identity, and assumptions. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's true for one is on a itty bitty tinier level would be true for that also. Yes. Yeah. And there are ways to seed uh, reality. S e e d to seed it. S e e d. Yes. Um, so, for instance, every time, uh, they've, they've actually done studies on this, every time the media publicizes a school shooting, there are more school shootings that follow shortly thereafter. And that's why we've gotten up to the level that we've gotten to is because so many of them have been so widely publicized. Uh, because it, it inserts into the collective consciousness the possibility that this could happen. And like before Columbine, it didn't happen. Nobody had ever conceived of it. It just was not on people's radars. It just didn't happen. But once Columbine happened, suddenly it's in the collective zeitgeist. And now it could happen again because it has happened before. And so there's a, a, there's a tantamount permission that comes from the, the actuality of an event. For that thing to happen again there's permission for it to happen again because it happened before right nobody broke the four minute mile for years because everyone said it couldn't be done until somebody did it and then within a week five other people had done it or something like that some a mm -hmm. bunch of people had done it right and that's because the the collective belief structure said it was impossible and one person opted out of the collective belief structure and said, for them, maybe, not for me. For my personal reality, it's totally possible, and I'm going to go for it. I'm going to make it happen. And then everybody else went, oh, it is possible. Here we go. Rock and roll hoochie coo, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm talking about, that an individual's belief structure can have a massive impact on the whole, especially if – media is involved with disseminating the information. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a complex issue. <laughs> and, and Just a wee after my brain's already tired. And now we're talking yeah. about this quantum right. physics. So, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to do something because we're further along in the podcast. Now I'm going to do something a little more advanced here. And it's pretty esoteric, so you may or may not be able to pick up on it, but I'm going to give you the option, okay? Because we've been talking about it intellectually, but the opting in and out is an, actually an energetic. And so I'm going to right now shift my energy to opt out of reality. I am now in a quantum state that is in between realities. And I'm allowing my voice to come through into this reality. But if you tap into my energy field, you should be able to feel that I am actually shifted. And I'm inviting you to have that experience because the shifting of this is the way that you opt out. Now, I don't recommend living in this state for long because your body isn't actually designed to operate in a quantumly shifted field. It's actually designed to operate in the collective reality that we've created. But for minutes at a time, you can do this. And if you sit in it long enough, you could, you know, start to fall apart. It's not a good idea, but... Oh, let's not do this. Let's and not. don't do this while you're driving. Definitely People, do this, this is not a thing driving. to do. <laughs> just, just, just don't. Just stop. Y'all yeah. know better. So, <laughs> so, but the shifting of your energy field into the quantum state allows you to move things within your physical reality into different configurations than what they are in your current collection, current consciousness. Right? So you can restructure different pieces of your belief structures, of your life, of your reality. And so long as when you come back in, and I'm going to come back in now, show you how to do that. 
It's going to bring my, myself back into physical reality. Breathing good. When you come back into this physical reality, as you cement yourself back into this reality itself, you can cement in the new structure that you're pulling into being. Now, the hard part is to stop believing that it can't happen that way. Because of the belief in the collective reality, right? But if you can suspend your disbelief, you don't have to believe it. You just have to suspend your disbelief that it can happen. Disbelief. Okay. Right? Okay. And then you can use this. It, it is more powerful than a spell. It is more okay, powerful so than I'm a station because it is literally wow. chaos magic that you are using to like form like clay your new reality. Okay. I'm going to try and describe what I experienced okay. just then. Yep. And you know me as I'm like, I don't know if I, I'm going to try and describe it. Okay. So, cause it's still, you know, new for me tapping into your energy um, yeah. or tapping into anything's energy. I, that's I, still new for me, but yeah. I don't often invite people into my energy field because, you know, sacrosanct, but yeah, I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not to not to mention. I don't know. It's a little intimidating because it's you, but I'm like, I'm gonna I'm go with it. Tell you know, me just saying. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you said you were shifting, I swear to God, on what I'm looking at the monitor thingy, like you started like vibrating, like. As not like whoosh, but like zzz, you know, right? Mm -hmm. And what I felt, and it was on the front, this half, uh, uh, my front, front side and my right side. It was like ener energetic, but it wasn't like hot. It wasn't cold. It was like I was... I don't know why microwave came to my head, but that's that it's, it was like, zzz, like in elect electrical pulses, you know, at a very, very rapid pace. Right. And I'm like, hold up. What? And I just like, okay, well, I'm going to do this. And when it happened the whole time that you were out, then whenever you said I'm coming back, I'm like, okay, then I swear to God, you, I watched you stop vibrating in front of me right now. And then I'm like, oh, now it feels like normal. So that was really, that was a new one for me. <laughs> Completely off the cuff. This is not rehearsed. But that's the only way that I can, I'm trying to think of something that like, okay, not a vibrator, vibrator, but that, 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 that vibrates, yeah. right? It's, it's, and it's almost like I could almost, I felt the hum yeah. of the energy. That's how I describe it. I can relate that to. We're happy that we are recording this in video so that you can actually go and see it on YouTube if you want to. Yeah. The only thing that I felt similar is when my mom had surgery for to replace her hip because it was broken and she was at home and I had called in the angels and I'm like, hey, can y'all please watch over her tonight? I have no sleep. I'm running on fumes and I can't be good to her during the day if I don't sleep. And when I tell you, when I walked in her bedroom, it was like walking in through an energy vortex. Mm -hmm. And I have never felt anything so powerful. I'm getting chills right now. But it was like, vroom. so it was similar to that. Yeah. So there you go. That That's what, I mean, real time, that's what I just experienced. Well, and, and <laughs> so I did this with a, a, a friend of mine who I was trying to get to come to one of my retreats years and years ago. I mean, it, God, it was like 2013, I think. Um, so a decade ago. Um, she looked at me and said, I don't know if you are big enough to hold me. And I immediately went and I expanded into 18 dimensions. 
and I was talking to her on Skype at the time. And on Skype, you don't see yourself. And, but I watched her eyes go like saucers <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? She's like, you're literally glowing. And I was like, cool, big enough. I can be bigger. <laughs> she was like, no, that's big enough. I'm like, okay. But, you know, and, and that's different, you know, spe specifically going 18 dimensions, boom, done. I'm, I'm operating across 18 dimensions. That's different mm -hmm. than what I did, which was unhooking from all reality, all dimensions. So that's, they were different. Oof. Yeah. So. Okay, that was cool. <laughs> so I keep, I keep having all these people contact me <laughs> and say, I want to come to Panama. I want to come to Panama. When are you doing a retreat? And I keep going, well, I don't know what I want to do a retreat about. What can I do a retreat about? And I'm like... Maybe I ought to just do stuff like this. <laughs> Maybe it's about learning how to use your energy field differently. I don't know. If that sounds interesting, let me know because I, I'm literally stuck in the, you know, I don't know what I'm going to offer for a retreat moment. So if email her suggestions, I'm telling y'all now, that's what she's saying. Email me suggestions. Kelly at kellysparta.com if you want to, <laughs> if, if this would be interesting to you or you have something else in mind, let me know. I am happy to, to take suggestions and, and plan a week-long retreat here in Boquete, Panama, which would be freaking awesome. So I would love to do that. There you go. If you've ever wanted to be in person with me, that's the way to do it. This is how we do it. Uh, do it. Uh, mm, uh, mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's, that's reality or lack thereof, right? So, <laughs> you know... Opt out periodically, especially if you want to change something significant. It is so much easier mm -hmm. to just opt out of reality, change the thing, and opt back in with the new thing in place than it is to try and manifest changing the thing. Because there are certain things in place in this reality that are, are attached to that thing that you're trying to change. And rather than trying to undo okay. it, just, you know, pick a reality in which they're different. Or create okay. in which they're different. <laughs> we now, are the divine and the divine is us. Read. The okay. Book. Okay. Talk about the act of creation. <laughs> Poof. There it was. Poof. There it is. <laughs> yep. And then you got to rest. So don't stay. So what could, yeah, I don't know. How long, how long could I stay? Wait, what now? Which is why we started with the burnout discussion. <laughs> That's it. Don't burn yourselves up or burn yourselves out. No. So for a beginner who's going to practice this. this is not a beginner skill. Okay, let me redefine what I said. Five years into the podcast, not... we are doing more advanced stuff now. If you are a beginner, you're going to have a hard time with this. Don't do this. this, is, this don't is, do this. Don't, don't opt out of reality because you don't know your way back, right? Um, okay. So, that's so for someone yeah this is a more advanced who, who's like yeah so if i'm like the first couple times i'm trying this i'm trying to say for me not to blow myself up <laughs> to get, don't stay gone like you know 20 minutes or no there's no blowing yourself up in this because you don't exist when you're in this. okay so there's nothing to blow up the the cha <laughs> the, the, the as i said the challenge is not blowing yourself up. The challenge is not being able to find your way back. You have to know what this physical okay. reality feels like. You have to be able to match your vibration to the physical reality you left in order to do this effectively or match it to the one you're creating if that's what you're choosing to do. But you really need to understand your own energetic vibration to do this work. Right? Okay. Because you know, okay. this is, so in the tree of life, there are two paths that go up to Kater. And then there is the box that is in the center of the two paths that goes, that, that is a third path that is not a line. It is a box. And the reason it's a box is because it is the abyss. And you have to go through the abyss if you're going to take the third path, you go through the abyss 
to get to Katera. You don't have to go around the sides and do all the work around the sides. You can go straight through the middle. But that means that you have to be willing to be unmade and then be able to make yourself back again on the other side. Because crossing the abyss, literally, you cease to exist. And what I did just then was I ceased to exist in this physical reality. I just was sending my voice across. And my energetic was, was not fully here. Okay? That's the okay. Abyss. But you have to know what your energetic is to bring it back. If you're just going to go out and come back, you have to do that. So I would say if you don't, if you're not sure whether you know or not, then I would say no more than five seconds. Okay. Okay. Because your energy will remember for five seconds what it was before, but you okay. start to lose cohesion, right? I held it for long enough that I was like, ew, wait a minute. <laughs> Like, I'm going to go find myself again. It took me a minute to come back into this reality because I was like, oh, I was out there for a while. Here, let me, let me, let me find the vibration to come back to, right? So you have to know your vibration. I mean, it was a little bit of a challenge for me to come back from that because I don't, I don't do that a lot, you know, in, in terms of holding it for long periods. I'm very quick with my work. So, you know. Yeah. These are all things that you can do, though. Well, there you go. All right, so what's your Kellyism on reality? It's just a suggestion. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been extremely insightful and entertaining. I, this has been cool as hell. I, I love this. Com complex topics and discussions, and it's way fun. See what? Ha see how much fun the advanced stuff is? You got to get through the big basics, get your stuff, and then the advanced stuff is really cool. So. The advanced stuff gets a little <laughs> hairy, but it also is really cool. So, you know. There you go. They come together. All right. Well, and that's all the time that we have for this week, folks. Tune in next time when it, Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. Maybe in an alternate reality, but we'll see. I'm Jules here with Kelly's Florida, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all.